Hi, this is Lou Rosenfeld, and greetings from Brooklyn, New York, and happy first World Information Architecture Day. I'm pretty amazed that it's been 14 years since the first edition of the Polar Bear book came out, and uh, uh, I'm grateful that uh, not only did O'Reilly give us the opportunity to publish what was kind of a different book for them, but that so many of you have been so kind to, to pick it up, read it, and get something from it, uh, both in the first edition and in the two editions since then. Um, I was trying to think back to what we had in mind uh, when we were writing that book uh, over 14 years ago. Uh, we were, in some respects, very frustrated. Uh, as librarians, we were frustrated that uh, people didn't really value the principles of librarianship like we felt they should, uh, especially in the uh, coming digital information revolution that was pretty clear to anyone who was looking for it at that time that it was taking place. Uh, we also felt a little frustrated that librarians didn't seem to necessarily imagine themselves outside of the box, outside those spaces known as libraries. And I'm, I'm very happy to, to see that um, the book has played maybe a very small role in both of those issues falling by the wayside. I like to think both uh, the understanding of librarianship and the practice of librarianship are both in much healthier places today than they were in 1998. There was another goal that we had, though, that was more important, and that was to help conversations get started. Uh, we felt very strongly that not only did librarians have something to offer about how to make information more findable and more understandable, but many fields, many disciplines. I can still remember the first day that Keith Instone uh, visited us, and here is someone from a computer science background who was talking about usability engineering, and frankly, it was still pretty new to us. And we were trying to understand how he would fit into this information architecture model that we were working on. And, and boy, did he. he. made an incredible contribution to our company, Argus. And we started hiring other people with other disciplinary perspectives. And it made for a really exciting environment, not just for us, but we saw that type of multidisciplinary team start coming together in many other organizations that we worked with. So the idea that different people could be working on the same problem, a problem that many of them had recognized for many years as a common problem, but didn't really have a language to, to use to have conversations about that problem, that was what we were really hoping would come out of the book. More conversations with different types of people so that we could bring all these different perspectives to solving information-related problems. So fast forward to today. Again, I'm pretty excited to see that the conversations are happening and, and hopefully the book played a role in providing that common vocabulary, that common recognition that information architecture was a thing and that it was a thing that many of us were equipped to handle in different ways and together that we could handle in even better ways. So it's something that spans so many disciplines. It's something that's becoming more of a, a, a property as well. So information architecture is a profession and as a job title is exciting and looking forward, I don't think it's going away. However, um, I'm not so concerned about the profession and the, and the job title of information architect as much as where information architecture is practiced and by whom. So let me talk a little bit about that distinction. I do think there are going to be information architects practicing in 14 years. I do think information is never going to go away. It's a challenging problem. I do think that we're always going to be confronted by rot, namely redundant, outdated, and trivial information. You get your information organized today, well, things are going to be different, very different tomorrow. And so the work is never going to end, and there's never going to be less information. Certainly there's going to be more, and there's going to be more need for people with the title information architect. But information architecture as a quality, as a practice that is something embedded in other places, to me is more important that more people outside our field are thinking about findability. And here's why I'm optimistic. I see information architecture now as becoming bedrock or a foundational aspect of user experience. To me, that's really exciting because user experience is a, a, an umbrella that's bringing together a lot of good things. But user experience itself is becoming a foundational aspect of design. More broadly, design is being woken up and, and enlivened by this interdisciplinary perspective that UX people are bringing to it. Finally, 
if the economy is going to go anywhere on this planet, if there's going to be any growth in a post-industrial age, it's, it's going to come from design. I think that's one of the main things that is going to be important for any advances that we make is not just to work on commodities that are based on technology, but qualities that are based on aspects of design. So I, I'm, I'm an optimist. Uh, I'm looking forward maybe to having this conversation in 2026. In the meantime, let's enjoy this year and this time and the great work that we're doing together. Thanks very much. Happy World IA Day.